I'm Alex Dykes and today we're taking a look at one of the last true American sports sedans. This is the Chrysler 300 SRT8. It has a 6.4 liter V8 engine under the hood and sends power to the rear wheels. All 300s were refreshed relatively recently, and as such we don't get quite as bold of a front end as we had in the first generation Chrysler 300, although things are definitely very big and very American up front. We have this really great large grille, we have these aggressive looking headlamps now with integrated LED daytime running lamps, and we still have that very upright, very tall hood profile that we've come to expect from the Chrysler 300, and that of course is because of what's under the hood. I'm sure that the primary reason for this blunt nose, this tall hood, and the high belt line in the Chrysler 300 is that it looks totally cool. But the secondary reason is right here in our SRT8 tester, and that's because this is a very tall 6.4 liter V8 engine. This is a push rodded engine, it's not a dual overhead cam or a single overhead cam engine, and as such it doesn't sound like one. It doesn't have direct injection, it's still just plain old multi-port fuel injection, which means that this engine sounds like that classic American muscle car V8 engine, and I'm really totally happy with that. This engine produces 470 horsepower and a stump pulling 470 pound-feet of torque. It sends all that power to the rear wheels through a Mercedes 5-speed automatic. For some reason, Chrysler has held off on the ZF8 speed automatic that's making its way through a wide variety of other products in the Chrysler lineup, but we do expect one next year in this car. If you had shopped the Chrysler 300 before the 2012 model year and were put off by the interior trappings, the quality of the bits, and that old infotainment system, then you need to give the Chrysler 300 another look. Because this interior in our 300 tester is one of the best interiors that I've been in this year, and that includes things from BMW, Mercedes, Audi, etc. And that's largely thanks to our $2,500 optional stitched dash in the 300. Now this is an absolutely gorgeous full leather dashboard, and that includes full leather doors and a full leather center console as well absolutely unheard of in this price range except for the Chrysler 300 products. This is uh, you know, much better than things like uh, the Lexus ES, Lexus GS. Uh, I would rank this interior higher than anything from Cadillac or Lincoln currently as well. You know, the Cadillac XTS has a fairly nice interior, so does the ATS, but they really don't have the level of polish that a stitched leather dashboard brings. Now, even if you don't opt for the stitched leather dashboard, we don't get the same rubbery and hard plastics that the last generation 300 suffered from. They're definitely much nicer softer touch plastics. The 300 SRT8 gets Chrysler's new SRT steering wheel with a somewhat flat bottom here and these great chunky sport grips down there and up here as well. Here we have our buttons to control the multi-information display in between the speedometer and the tachometer, our voice command button, our phone button. Over here we get our cruise control buttons and our particular model does have the optional radar cruise control. Back here we have these great paddle shifters on the left and the right. So you can see they're only on the top portion of the steering wheel because if we go to the back of the steering wheel you can see where Chrysler places their audio control buttons. This particular side of the steering wheel is volume up and down and the other side has track up and down. Up front the seats are very similar to the regular Chrysler 300 except we have more aggressive bolstering on the seat bottom cushion and the seat back cushion. Thankfully, Chrysler didn't go out of control with the seat back cushion bolstering, however, like some auto manufacturers do, meaning that my average size six foot frame fits fairly nicely in this seat. And with a lot of sports cars and a lot of sports sedans, they go just a little bit too overboard for my tastes on the seat bolstering, and it feels like you can't really sit back in the seat properly because it's pinching your shoulders. That doesn't happen in the Chrysler 300 SRT8. Down here we have the same power seat controls as a regular Chrysler 300 with a decent range of motion and of course a four-way lumbar support. We also have power adjustable pedals and a power tilt telescoping steering column with a decent range of motion. This front passenger seat, which is kind of interesting, has the same range of motion as the driver's seat in the 300, which is a little bit unusual, but it's very much appreciated. I have a decent amount of both headroom and legroom in the rear of the vehicle. This front seat's adjusted for me at six feet tall. But if I move over to this middle seat, you'll see the one problem with these very bucket-shaped outboard seats in the rear, and that's I don't have a whole lot of headroom back here. My head's touching the ceiling in the middle seat if I lean very far back in the seat, and if I sit in a more natural position, you'd have to cock your head to one side 
and that's because of this large panoramic roof in the Chrysler 300. If you frequently have uh, average or tall sized people sitting in this middle seat, then you probably want to do without this panoramic sunroof. Our Chrysler 300, of course, has the heated rear seats, and these rear seats do fold to enlarge the cargo area in the trunk, which is a nice feature with a vehicle that's this large. Rear passengers also get a center armrest, which is nicely upholstered, decent change from the previous model with a nice little storage cubby there. Let's take a look at the trunk now. Back here you can see we have a fairly large trunk. This is the largest roller bag you can carry in a domestic flight. You fit quite a number of those very easily in this trunk. One thing you won't find, however, is a spare tire in the 300 SRT8 because under this hatch we only have a can of fix-a-flat and some extra cargo storage area. The battery is also back here helping improve the 300's weight distribution. And of course, the step-in height in this trunk is fairly low, making it very easy to get in and out of the trunk. Now the upholstery in the trunk isn't quite as top-notch as the interior is, but we do have a nice handle on the inside to help you close the trunk lid. Overall, I'd give this trunk an 8 out of 10 score in our exclusive trunk comfort index because it is fairly large, it's fairly easy to get in and out of, but we lose a few points because these trunk hinges do impact head and foot room in the trunk of the 300's cargo area, and there's no handle on the outside helping you close the trunk lid, meaning you're going to have to press down on that spoiler. Let's take a look at the infotainment system now. Now all models of the 300 SRT8 come with Chrysler's Uconnect 8.4. It's this 8.4 inch touchscreen that you see here. And it handles all of your interactions with your multimedia devices, your navigation, your phone, etc. As well as some SRT specific features. Chrysler's gone button minimalist with Uconnect. Down here you'll find the only physical buttons and knobs in the system. Over here we have the power and volume knob. Over here we have tune and an enter button. Here we have the fairly minimalist set of climate control functions. The rest of the climate control functions are all in the software system. Right here we have an SD card slot, so you can put music on an SD card and play that with the system. And down here we have our traditional CD player, of course. Uconnect software interface is very nicely done. This screen is a fairly high resolution screen and all the graphics are very attractive in this particular unit. Down here on the bottom we have direct access to certain features. Of course we get radio player, we get controls, which is where you'd find your heated seat, ventilated seat, heated steering wheel, etc. We of course get our climate control buttons duplicated, we have the nav button, phone, and on our particular vehicle, since we're in an SRT8 model, we have an SRT button over there. Over here on the player tab, we have our fairly typical iPod, USB, and multimedia interface. We can change sources by this little button up here and change between our disc, our auxiliary input, Bluetooth streaming. Of course, we have an iPod connected to the USB port. If you had a different device there, that label would be different, and our SD card that we went over earlier. Now, this car only has one USB port, and that's just particular to our Chrysler 300 SRT8. Different models have a different number of USB ports. The system did work very well with our iPhone 5, and it was able to charge our iPad 3, which is fairly unusual in the automotive segment. Back on this particular interface, you can see that we now have voice commands for our iDevice or USB media device as well. Play artist Toby Keith. Playing the artist, Toby Keith. The system very rarely got anything wrong, which is more than I can say for other voice command systems for music devices out there. It does work very well with a wide variety of media devices, as I said. We're going to skip the nav system and go straight to the phone button. So you can see Uconnect offers a stereotypical phone interface. It has a full dial pad, which is very handy. And across the top, you can see we have direct access buttons to particular contacts course have complete access to our phone book which it downloads and syncs with your phone and our usual redial and end buttons. If your phone supports Bluetooth messaging we have a text message button over here that allows the system to both send and receive texts for you. Since we're in an SRT8 model this button over here says SRT and more but that's where you'll find system settings as well as Sirius Travel Link. Sirius Travel Link is your data service it provides fuel prices, weather, movie listings, sports and Sirius subscription information as well. Direct access button to call Sirius if you'd like. My Favorites allows you to store multiple different weather locations so you can see them all on one screen. The SRT performance section is unique to the SRT models and varies a little bit from vehicle to vehicle. But since we're in a Chrysler 300 SRT8, you can see we have a picture of the vehicle there. This is where we can adjust the suspension between regular sport and sport track modes. Over here we have our timers button so you can see your current 0 to 60, uh, eighth mile, quarter mile, braking distance, etc. You can see the last that you've done and you can see the best of all time. So you can see the best in this particular vehicle over the past uh, nearly 7,000 miles was a 4.6 according to the car. According to our GPS, our best time was 4.5. Some of this varies, of course, uh, based on 
the uh, the tires that are on the vehicle and their profile, etc. Over here we have our G-force counter, so you can see your current G-force, your peak G-force, etc. Over here we have some specialty gauges. We have oil temperature, oil pressure, battery voltage, etc. You can start the vehicle, and you can see how these gauges change. So go back to that SRT performance gauges screen. You can see now we can see our oil pressure there, and our battery voltage has gone up. If we go over here, we have a second set of gauges. This gives you even more detail, so you can see your incoming air temperature, coolant temperature, oil pressure, etc. Um, our exterior temperature right now is 57 degrees, and just because the car was recently started, that's why that's so high. If we go over here to engine, this is kind of an interesting screen. You can see how many horsepower and how many pound-feet of torque your engine is currently producing, both in a little bar graph that goes across there, as of course numbers over here as well. Uh, it also tells you what gear you're in and the speed that you're going. Over here on the handling screen, it's again another sort of a G-force gauge uh, showing you what the car is doing and what the steering angle is in the car right now. So you can see we can change the steering angle and those little wheel icons change. Over here on the options, you can change the color of your vehicle and of course you can change the background of the screen as well. Over here on NAV, this interface should look very familiar to you if you've ever used an aftermarket Garmin NAV system because essentially Chrysler has integrated Garmin software directly into this Uconnect interface. So all the buttons here are essentially the same that you'd find in that aftermarket Garmin system. This is fully voice commandable in Uconnect 8.4 now, although the voice commands are slightly less logical than some of the competition. So in most vehicles you'd tell the NAV system, uh, you'd press the little voice command button and you'd say navigation destination street address or navigation destination point of interest. In this particular system you press that button and you read what you're seeing here on the screen. So you'd either say view map or where to. That's a little bit less intuitive than I would like. But once you're on that where to option all these other sections are completely voice commandable. You can enter ma addresses manually. You can enter addresses with that voice command system and it does respond very well. Once you're actively navigating somewhere it's fairly easy to come in here and stop navigation or enter a detour, two things that are usually buried somewhat deeply in competitive systems. Before we take Chrysler's Fire Breather out for a spin, there are a few things we need to cover. The first is weight. This guy weighs about 4,400 pounds, so it's not exactly a lightweight, but then again, it's not quite as heavy as other cars that are in the same performance class either. Second thing are these tires back here, because all Chrysler 300 SRT8s come with 245s all the way around. These are 245, 45R20s on our particular model here. Now, we have been told by other 300 owners that you can fit considerably wider tires into these wheel wells back here without causing too much of a drivability problem, without also causing much of a rubbing problem or needing to have your fenders rolled or anything like that. But those really do define the handling characteristics of the Chrysler 300 SRT8. And the last thing is the weight balance. Because, of course, we have that enormous 6.4 liter engine up front, it does affect the weight balance a little bit. And the weight balance in our particular model here is 54% to the front and 46% to the rear. Because of that 245 with rubber in the back, it is kind of narrow when you consider the 470 pound-feet of torque that this engine is putting down. Our 0 to 60 times varied between 4.46 to 60 and 4.7 seconds to 60. It is somewhat of a decent variance, but it does have an awful lot to do with the road surface, how warm your tires are, how good the nannies are at any particular moment in trying to quell that, you know, tire burning back there. Now our braking is very good in this vehicle thanks to those enormous Brembo brakes. So once you do get up to speed, you can stop fairly rapidly. And again, that has more to do with the front tire size. And in vehicles like this, 245s up front are not abnormally small, uh, but 245s in the rear are a little bit narrow. Again, you can change those out aftermarket, and that's definitely something that I would do. Some people dislike slightly front-heavy rear-wheel drive cars, but 54% up front really isn't bad for a vehicle that's this powerful and this large. And I think it, uh, it makes the handling a bit more predictable in neutral situations. So when you're not power on, you know, it does a little bit more front-heavy, so the front's going to tend to plow a little bit more. And that's a lot more predictable for the average driver. So have no complaints there. Uh, when you're under power, however, that front heavy nature with those somewhat narrow tires in the rear do make the vehicle kind of lively. But again, I think I like that, and so no complaints there either. Good performance braking and handling numbers don't mean anything if the car doesn't have a decent ride. And that's because a lot of people are going to use a car like the Chrysler 300 SRT8 to commute to work in. You know, to go visit family members on weekends, to go for that weekend trip to Napa, something like that. And in those situations, it's important that the car have a nice highway ride and have a ride that handles potholes, speed bumps, and other road irregularities like that with aplomb. And that's really an area where the SRT8 excels. That's thanks to their access to the Mercedes parts bin. 
The rear suspension in this car is derived from the Mercedes E-Class suspension, and the front suspension is derived from the Mercedes S-Class suspension. The benefit to Chrysler, of course, is that those suspensions were undoubtedly very expensive to design, and they didn't have to spend quite as much money to design something that's really great at handling a wide variety of road surfaces. In addition to having a classy suspension design, Chrysler bundled it with an adaptive suspension that's controlled via their Uconnect infotainment system here. There are three different modes. There's regular, there's sport, and there's track sport. And in addition to just firming up the suspension, the system also has a predictive nature about it, which allows the suspension to try and correct for body roll and tip and dive, things like that. The steering feel in the 300 SRT8 is excellent, and that's because Chrysler has not replaced their hydraulic power steering in this car with an electric power steering unit, which is what pretty much everybody else on the market is doing. So although this steering unit isn't the most responsive or most communicative that I've ever felt, in today's modern world, it really shines. The enormous power from that engine under the hood, as well as this regular automatic that we have here in the center console, and this three-mode adaptive suspension really turned the 300 SRT8 into sort of a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde kind of machine. And that's a really great thing in my book, because you can stuff your mother-in-law in the back, you can drive off to wherever, and she's not going to be offended by your sports car purchase. But then when you find a great mountain road like this, you can drop it in track sport mode, and you can have more fun than you thought possible in a vehicle that's this big. I mean, the power is just absolutely epic and seemingly unendless with this engine. It is a truly fast vehicle, and the acceleration is absolutely breathtaking. Some of our viewers of our Dodge Challenger review took exception to us comparing the Challenger to a BMW 6 Series, but I think the comparison is equally valid here with the Chrysler 300 SRT8, and in a good way for Chrysler. Part of that's because, of course, that Chrysler was raiding the parts bin. This car is not that distantly related to the Mercedes E-Class, and so a comparison to the Mercedes E63 is definitely valid and in order. Our particular SRT8 tester here rang in at just under $60,000, which represents an incredible value when you compare it to the E63. And if I were to choose between the two of them, I would take the Chrysler 300. It doesn't have the, uh, the panache and the schnazzy brand you know, that the E63 comes with, but I think that the, uh, the 300 SRT8 is just a bit more fun. It's, it's a bit rougher around the edges. The engine is an awful lot more engaging than that twin turbo unit they have in the modern E63, and you can't beat the price. This car is an absolute blast on your favorite winding mountain road, and that's thanks to a very well-sorted system of electronic nannies that help keep your butt on the road. And that's very important when you have this much power in a vehicle like this. They're, they're not only well sorted, but they also allow you just that little bit of tail happiness to make you feel like you know what you're doing out on the road. Now Chrysler also includes a complete array of safety systems. They include pre-collision warning, and of course the 300 SRT8 has scored very well in a wide variety of crash tests. If you're looking for something a bit more engaging out on the road, then you might want to wait till the 2014 model year, however, because our rumor mill tells us that Chrysler is going to put their 8-speed transmission that they're sourcing from ZF into that 2014 SRT8. And ZF's 8-speed automatic transmission is used in a wide variety of luxury and ultra-luxury vehicles. It's an absolutely excellent transmission, and the Chrysler version is no different in our ex brief experience with it in a number of different Chrysler vehicles. The ship For 2013, pricing on the Chrysler 300 SRT8 ranges from just under $48,000 to just under $60,000. It's a decent value for what you're getting here. 470 horsepower, 470 pound-feet of torque, and most importantly, an incredibly well-polished ride. That's the biggest thing about the Chrysler 300 is not the power, not the size of the vehicle, and not necessarily the price. It's the level of refinement that you get in this vehicle for that price tag. And we have that gorgeous leather dashboard in this vehicle. We have an absolutely impeccable ride. We have incredible power as well, all for under $60,000. So if you take my advice and you're looking for something in that price range, or even if you're looking at something a bit more expensive, you should definitely put the Chrysler 300 on your list.